Welcome to First Things First on this July 4th Independence Day. I am Jenna Wolf. That is the Hall of Famer Chris Carter. That is Nick Wright. Thank you so much for spending your holiday with us on a very busy morning, even though it is a holiday. The NBA doesn't know that. They yeah. just keep rolling and be along. Be careful with your fireworks today. I say this is the son of a fireman. Spent many a 4th of July watching these guys go out, put out fires, roof fires. Be careful with your fireworks. Have a good time. You know what? Also, as a juvenile delinquent, set a lot of stuff on fire. It, wait, <laughs> you or me? Y you. Okay, this is true. Sometimes <laughs> I was putting out fires I set, but that doesn't matter. The point is, be careful today and have a good day. Yeah, you I'm said... more concerned about my outfit. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> Wardrobe. Don on my makeup. First time, Don. Mm -mm. See, Let's she's do got this. a little white. You got show. some red. I got a little blue. We you did were it very saying, nice. Nah, no, that's okay. My brother's a plastic surgeon. There's always a bunch of oh, firework accidents yes. that happen like on this JPP. day. Like, like JPP. Like JPP. Like he had to get his hand put back together. Exactly. Absolutely right. Agreed. You want me to start the show? Yes, That's let's what do the it. people are here for. Let's do it. Let's do that. We'll let's start in the away. NBA where we are learning more about the one-year deal that sent DeMarcus Cousins to the Warriors. Uh, or in other words, the best got better, according to a report. The Lakers could have had him for a similar price, similar deal, but they politely declined. Thank you, no thank you. Opting to sign free agent veterans like Lance Stevenson and Rajon Rondo instead. CC, what do you think? Did the Lakers make a mistake passing on Boogie Cousins? I don't think they made a mistake. I think the, the, the Lakers, they've been going about this the, the right way. And we as basketball fans may have to make sure that we just don't because you mentioned the Warriors. You right. can't make every move with the Warriors in mind as far as, oh, this is going to get us closer to the Warriors. Because if you do that, you can make a lot of mistakes. This is not the offseason that they just have to get everything right. Magic Johnson has said it's going to be patience. All right. It started off last year with the draft class. Ball, Kuzma, they got that part right. They made it through the season. They got some great experience. They have the big, biggest free agent acquisition that they've gotten since, I mean, maybe, Shaq. I mean, and Shaq was a trade. Like, you could yeah, argue I, biggest free agent acquisition ever. But b biggest player acquisition in line with acquiring Wilt, Kareem, Shaq, right. and now LeBron. LeBron has said he matched Magic Johnson. What he said is going to take some patience. LeBron realizes that and when he went back to Cleveland, it was going to take patience. They end up getting to the finals the first year. Didn't expect that. So you can make some bad mistakes by trying to go out. And I know, so it's, is it a mistake if they don't sign him? No. But is it a mistake if they don't sign him, then he goes to the Warriors? And you're like, eh. if he didn't go to the Warriors, this definitely wouldn't be our lead question. But I don't feel as if they made a mistake because long term, you can rent certain players. But Boogie Cousins, knowing he's only going to be there for part of the season, knowing you have a very, very young roster that is still trying to form itself, to me, Boogie is not the guy that I'm going to take a chance on around all those younger players, knowing that you're going to lose him. Now, with him going to Golden State, they could get a Boogie next season to a long-term contract with LeBron, and we can see if he's healthy. We can see if he can follow up that second year of not, have, not being a, a distraction to his team the way he was this year for the Pelicans being a stellar teammate. So I believe that they did the right thing staying off of Boogie on a one-year deal. So the one-year deal is the key part here because when we talked about this before Boogie signed with the Warriors and I was all tied up in knots about whether or not the Lakers should pursue him, the reason that I ultimately said I don't know is I wouldn't have wanted Boogie on a three- or four-year deal and I wouldn't have wanted Boogie on a one-year deal. If he would have taken the two, by the way, the deal the Pelicans offered him after the injury during the season, two years, yes. $20 million a season, that to me was the Goldilocks zone. That to me was the perfect zone because a multi-year deal. Now, Nick, this was before injury. No, this was, was post-injury post before free agency. Because well, most people could see, you know, okay, well, maybe if it's before the injury. No, no this no, was, was after. after he the, was still looking for a max deal. Exactly. It was after the injury but before free agency opened that the Pelicans offered him that deal. So why does two years make more sense to me than one? Because I would have significant concerns if I sign Boogie Cousins to a one-year deal, knowing that he's not going to be healthy until around Christmas, that also knowing that he is going to want to go out and prove he is a max player. The only team that I think can take him on this deal, a one-year deal, 
and feel great about it is Golden State because, A, they don't need him. B, he knows he is sacrificing touches and money and opportunity just to get a ring and to prove himself. There's one other team I'd like to go add to that list because I believe he could have gone to Boston. On a one-year deal? Well, they, they definitely reached out to him. Mm -hmm. They had communication with him. But when you look at Boston's roster, Kyrie would be coming back. Gordon Hayward to be coming back. They've had a great deal of patience. Gordon got hurt last year. So it's a roster with a number of talented players so he could take his. They feel the bill as far as you could take your time sure. in coming back for I, one year. I just mean the concern that when you get Boogie back, if he is not, if he doesn't have the long-term security, is he instantly going to try to prove to everyone, I'm still 25 and 12, run it through me. When he goes to Golden State, he knows that's not the way their offense is going to run. He makes that sacrifice. I, I didn't like Boogie going to Golden State for a lot of reasons. That doesn't mean he was a perfect fit at that contract for every team. And I have to remind people, LeBron just last year, had to go through how many stops and starts of the season, right? Oh, yeah. You do I didn't this even, trade, and then yeah, IT is not healthy, that. and then he is <laughs> healthy, and you do that trade. You, you, LeBron's going to play amongst guys he's never played with, totally new roster. And if you have Boogie coming in, by the way, the Lakers also on a one-year deal, wouldn't have the ability to go over the cap to re-sign him. So it would be a rental for a half a season and to have, all right, LeBron's getting used to playing with Ingram or whomever. Sure. And now Boogie comes in. Like, that, I I wouldn't have hated the deal had they done it, but I understand why they said it's not the perfect And, Nick, you, you would, what's your thought on, okay, Boogie and his question marks as far as his personality being drastically different than the personality of Rondo and Lance and their influence in this locker room on these younger players. Listen, I think that it's one thing. If Lance is going to be the ninth man on the roster. I think the ninth man can only have so much influence. I think Rondo was brought in because he has remade his image in the last two years and because he, they think he can, he can be a good insurance policy for Lonzo. Boogie is considered and is one of the 15 best players in the league. The influence he has is so much greater from a positive or negative standpoint than the other young guys. So I don't fully buy the, the one-year reason why the Lakers wouldn't want Boogie just because they did bring Lance and Rondo in for, for one year. So if LeBron's looking for a, a team that's going to stay for a while, he's going to have to rely on the young guys. But my question to you is how much, and you brought this up, how much is LeBron's influence now on bringing players in? How much is LeBron consulted with on who's going to come in? How much does this kind of, you know, have the, the feel that maybe LeBron had his hands on the, des the desire not to play with a guy like Boogie Cousins? No, I just, I, I think it's so easy uh, to be able to blame. We've seen this wherever LeBron went, that he was getting blamed as far as the move. We have to understand that the man who's making the basketball moves has a better resume than LeBron James, and it's Magic Johnson. All right. It's not the same situation last year, Colby Altman, right. a young general manager. So people, when you have a star like that, people always want to be able to say, oh, he's making decisions. LeBron wants to be put in a position a lot like he was in Miami, where you had someone who was running those things, but by the way, bring those things to LeBron, not to be approved, but just let them know some of the things they're thinking about. I believe that's the best way to move forward, and that's the reason why LeBron signed with the Lakers so quick was because he must have a great deal of faith in Magic Johnson. So this and this just about him not fitting. I, I think, I think it was the – well, first, let me just respond real quick. I know LeBron signed off on the Rondo thing, so I do think they are, they are doing their own due diligence, and then with a guy like Rondo who has posed, who has had rivalries with LeBron, there's a famous picture of, Le of Rondo posing with a lady wearing a LeBron is a bleep shirt. There might be a little bad blood. Are you cool with this? But the as far as the fit, I, I do think it's also important to know. It is easier for the Lakers to have Boogie Cousins on this team in two or three or four years without him being on the team next year on a one-year deal. Yes. You, you can do a sign and trade. He if you do sign him, you can it, the chance of you getting him back are, are really slim. Especially if they believe they are going to get Kawhi. And the, Le, the Lakers' number one objective this offseason was to get LeBron. They got that, and while we all just found out they had it locked in a couple days ago, 
it seems like the Lakers were very confident they have had this locked in for some time. Every move since then has been about making sure they can get Kawhi Leonard. And with what CC's reported about Kawhi not feeling like super teams are the thing in the NBA, yes. they also have to do the math of, does adding Boogie make Kawhi more likely to want to be a Los Angeles Clipper rather than a Los Angeles Laker? That's a real question right there. And I believe that Kawhi would be, uh, he would go away from the attention. All right, he would go away from the circus atmosphere. He doesn't mind playing with LeBron, doesn't mind playing for the Lakers, but he doesn't want it to be a circus. He doesn't want to have, okay, we're trying to acquire all these, but Kawhi believes he's the best player in the world. He would love to play with LeBron and just go at the rest of the league. And I think the league believes that Boogie Cousins on a one-year, five to eight million dollar deal would be a disgruntled player would feel like he got screwed over by the by injury mm -hmm. like the so if theoretic if you're going to get the perfect version of boogie even for only half a season of course that's worth six million dollars but not if he is going to be a disruption the war and not if you're not going to be able to sign him long, long term. term the warriors feel like a I happen, I'm not reporting this, I believe. The Warriors feel like this is, there's no downside here. This is no. the type of money that Aaron Baines gets. If it doesn't work, we can cut him. Come in when you come in, play it, when you're ready to play. And we don't need you. Right. Like the cat, the, the Lakers would be relying on Boogie when he comes back to be a very quality player. All right, we're going to take a break now. Coming up, let's talk some football on the other side. Are the Dallas Cowboys contenders? According to Pro Football Focus, they are. That's next on a July 4th edition of First Things First. Catch baseball's biggest stars for an unforgettable show from the nation's capital, the MLB All-Star Game on July 17th only on Fox or stream it live on the Fox Sports app. And here's the best part. We will be there live yep. on our show. Monday and time. Tuesday yeah. live in D.C. Come say hi. All right, we're going to get to the Cowboys in a second. But first, Jordan Bell. With the sick putback dunk, summer league action. Very, so very good. athletic. As you see, what would he do for the Warriors? This is the kind of stuff he can do. Putbacks, play energy, uh, energy on the defensive end. Very good athlete. He loves these off the backboard dunks. Remember, he threw one to himself in summer league day before yesterday. He didn't get it. This one by a team. Yeah, he prefers it from someone else. More yeah. NBA summer league. Trey Young coming off a rough start. Beautiful floater over two defenders, but another rough outing. For Trey Young. Nick, Five that's your guy, bro. Last night. Listen, it's Summer League's first couple games. He was better in game two than he was in game one. Not by much. I would... I would say qu by quite a bit. He was one of five from three as opposed to one of 11 from three. <laughs> <laughs> Already made one. On to the World Cup. Yuri Mina of Colombia with a header and stoppage time to tie this game with England. M uh, Mina is a tremendous defensive player. He's come up big in this whole World Cup. He scored a couple goals on set pieces like this, corner kicks. Tallest, tallest athlete that they have on the team. Nice leaper in the back there, Nick. You thought Colombia might be able to steal this. They didn't have their best player, James Rodriguez. But oh, man. England would not be denied. Eric Dyer with the penalty kick goal to send England to the quarterfinals where they will face Sweden. Love football. All right, I must admit, yesterday I was a little annoyed with Jenna Wolf because she was bragging that her team was the one still left. But they just hadn't played their round of 16 games. And then what yet. happened? But then England oh. advanced. So my team knocked out in the quarters, Mexico. England keeps going. And, by the way, with Spain being out of the tournament, England all of a sudden. A lot of people talking about Brackets England. opened up for England quite a bit here. Another penalty kick shootout in the quarters. England keeps it moving. Thanks, Nick. No problem. Moving on to our version of football. NFL season just months away. A lot of eyes on the Dallas Cowboys looking for a bounce back season after failing to reach the playoffs in 2018. According to Pro Football Focus, they should have the roster to do it. Based on their grades from last season, the Cowboys have the eighth best roster in the NFL. CC, you buying Cowboys as a top 10 NFL team after what you saw last year? I don't know about a top 10 NFL team. Um, they have some serious concerns, um, lack of playmakers. Um, on a consistent basis, who's going to be their number one receiver, who's going to move the change for them. I think they'll be very, very good running the football. Dak, in his third year, how efficient is he as a quarterback? We saw last year him take a couple steps back after a sensational rookie season. So I don't 
I don't think they're a top ten. I also I don't know about their defense. Right. I th that's my. So I look at the Cowboys are eight. The Rams are nine. Yes. Okay. And I, I'm not trying to parse eight versus nine, but the Rams have obviously a better D lineman than anyone on the Cowboys and Aaron Donald. You could argue mm -hmm. and Sue's as good as anyone on the Cowboys. They obviously have two better corners than anyone on the Cowboys and Tlaib and Peters. They have a better receiver than anyone on the Cowboys and Brandon Cooks. Oh, but the Cowboys have Zeke. The Rams got Todd Gurley. Mm -hmm. Like I, the, the, right. And so I just, it is the Cowboys have the number one offensive line and arguably the number one running back, but is that enough to raise a, your team to a top 10 status? I don't know about that. Well, this, this is the thing I, I, I would be concerned with. If you tell me, Chris, you can have one of these teams over Dallas, and which team would go the furthest as far as the playoffs? I believe the Rams. These are, are all teams behind them that yes. you're talking about. Go ahead. I believe that the, the roster might be better based on uh, PFF, what they're saying. I can, I can stick with that, but... The Rams, the Jags are number 10. I would take the Jags, and their playoff chance is better. Seattle, not necessarily their playoff, but if you tell me in the regular season, I would take Seattle. And if you tell me you're going to give me Aaron Rodgers, I don't care who's with him. I'm going to take them over Dallas. So those are the teams ranked behind them. You know, Dallas being a top 10 team, if they finished in the top 10 this year, that would be a good season for the Cowboys. Dallas lose Jason Witten and they lose Des Bryant, and yet they still are now even more primed to do better this year. How does this team look different than it did last year? I, I Besides mean, getting Zeke back. Those are, the, I mean, those are the two biggest different looks. I mean, it's basically the same offensive line. They, yeah. they I mean, I think the getting Zeke back is the key. I also think Enough to propel them to well, number two. No, I mean, we can't. There's no one... I don't know. I don't. I don't know anyone in the football world is saying Dallas has gotten better without Witten and without Des. Like, no, there's nothing saying they're ready to propel them going forward. No. Besides saying that Zeke will be there for the full season. Uh, Tyron Smith, the left tackle, he is healthy. He's one of the best left tackles in, in pro football. He would be better, but. There's nothing to say. Oh, they're getting ready to propel the Cowboys to be. A, uh, they were not a playoff team last year. Right. So what did they do this offseason to make them a playoff team? Those are the things we're questioning. And listen, PFF, I know you spent some time there. And yes. I love PFF. I was an early adopter. My guy Sam Monson back when they only had like three employees. And I was doing local radio because it gave guys like me an idea, a way to figure out, wait, who are the good centers in the league other than the pro bowlers? Yes. Who are the good interior defensive linemen who aren't racking up sacks? Like, so I respect what they do, but one of the reasons the Cowboys, I think, are going to be favored more by that metric community than maybe general football analysts is you can't give equal weight to, oh, okay, well, the Cowboys have an elite right guard, and so that's going to offset their average quarterback. Like, it, Zach Martin has almost the same PFF grade as Aaron Rodgers. Okay, well, that's great. But Zach Martin, we all know. He's not going to touch he's, the ball. Right. He's not going to have the impact of that. So the Cowboys have a lot. They have as many A-plus players as almost any team in the league. And the, most of those being on the offensive line. Well, I would, all of them, except for their running back. Mm -hmm. Like they, they and you might call some people might call Demarcus Lawrence an A plus player. I would maybe have him a little bit lower. PFF loves Demarcus Lawrence. Got him yes. as a ninety four out of a hundred. Mm -hmm. But they, they they don't have. I'd rather have my great players almost diversified. Sure. You know what I mean? Spread out, and that's what the Cowboys don't have. PFF was also much higher on Dak Prescott than I think a lot of media folk were last year, and I think they rank him higher as being a bigger factor and focus. Him, for sure. Jason Garrett are those two components where we're going to have to look at. To right. Really well, one thing that you, PFF they're not taken into consideration when we're watching the games Zeke's out of the lineup they're not taking in consideration all the pressure that we put on Dak to perform like some of the other great quarterbacks so yes I believe in the numbers and when they do the numbers he is he is solid but in year number three he can't play that way he's got to play a lot better because they have less you miss Witten's not there Dells is not there Terrence Williams got to play better football. They have him ranked, I think, as a 53-ranked player. You can't be that and be sometimes going to be the number one guy and definitely their number two wide receiver. And what the Cowboys have going against them is the team that's number one on this list and the team that's going to be number one on most people's list is in their division. 
in Philadelphia. And so if you have a team that seems to be as solid as Philly is on both sides of the ball with an amazing quarterback and a damn good backup, and all of a sudden, okay, so now instead of competing with four teams to win your division, which I know is their goal going into the year and I can't discount them from that, what you're really doing is you're competing with the rest of the NFC for one of two wild card spots. You're competing with the tougher conference yeah. for one of the two wild card spots. You can't sneak into the playoffs out of the NFC East when Carson Wentz is there. And so how can, and we already know the NFC is the tougher of the two conferences. PFF's gotten eighth in football, but fifth in the NFC, which speaks to the depth oh, of yeah. power in in that conference. All right, let's take a break. Back to basketball on the other side. Coming up, are the Sixers now emerging as the favorites to land Kawhi? That is next. First things first. Oh, we getting a little history in on the show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. now I, I got my I got my two passions colliding: American history and sports. We do those little vignettes every day. God, you're so not a nerd. <laughs> you're really listen, not. Listen, I like to be a as Cece would say, a learned person. I care. I like. I, I wish it's I knew more about Nick. world history, but American it's history is kind of my area of study. That's cool. Happy Fourth of July, Happy everybody! Happy Fourth of July, everyone! Thanks for spending your Fourth with us here on First Things First. Music still going. Yeah. You're feeling emotional. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, time for some stories to start your morning. Music changed. We need to move on. Brought to you by the unexpected energy of Exxon Mobil. Tough news. Toot that for... thing out. Make that my. Oh, <laughs> oh <excuse me. laughs> Tough news for the New England Patriots. Wide receiver Julian Edelman lost his appeal and will serve his full four-game suspension for performance-enhancing drugs. CC, how much will the Patriots miss Edelman in the early going? Oh, they're going to miss him? Man, you do the crime, you got to do the time. Man, they ain't letting those, especially performance-enhancing drugs. When's the last time we've seen one of these overturned? And they need him. His career, this is a big year in his career. Injured last season. Gronk might be his last year. Yep. I think, man, it could be a lot of... Uh, faces in New England, this is their last season. And this is, I mean, this is a missed opportunity for Edelman. Cooks is gone. Amazon yes. is gone. Like the, and so I'm not surprised at all that this suspension got upheld. To Chris's point, you sometimes see the street drug suspensions reduced. You very rarely see the PED suspensions reduced. All right, to the NBA now. The Wizards are expected to sign Dwight Howard to a one-year deal. Howard averaged over 16 points and 12 rebounds for the Hornets last Say season. Say that again, Jenna. What did he average for the Hornets? I, I'm telling you. 16 oh. points, 12 rebounds. Oh, okay. You all right with that? Yeah, absolutely. Nick, how much can Dwight help the Wizards? He's better than Marcin Gortat. Now, that, that's a little combustible locker room. Dwight's never been a great locker room guy, but the guy he's replacing in Gortat, he and John Wall really didn't like each other. So as long as he's better than Gortat in that regard, he's, a, he's an upgrade off the court. And on the court, he's still better than Marcin Gortat. He's still one of the best rebounders in basketball. I think that's a good move by them. You have to give Dwight at this point in his career credit. Really, really solid season. Also, he knows what he can do and what he can't do. Now, you might not like what he can't do because he is limited as an offensive player and, as you mentioned, not known as a great teammate. There's a reason why what Nick would say one of the 50 greatest players ever, why he's played on the many teams as he's played on. That's a good point. That All is right. true. Bounced around a bit. Good news for Devin Booker. He and the Phoenix Suns are finalizing a five-year, $158 million deal. Not Ooh. bad for a 21-year-old. Nick, good move for the Suns to lock up Booker? I think it is a good move. I, I know that there are some Phoenix fans a little trepidatious about this. They saw Andrew Wiggins after year three, averaged 24 points. He got this contract, and now that looks like the worst contract in basketball. Year three for Booker, he averaged 25 points. He gets the contract, but I think Booker's a special player. I think he was a steal in the draft, and you got to lock these types yeah, of guys Phoenix, up. Yeah, Phoenix fans, you should be worried if they move to go. If they move it up to like 15 feet off the ground, <laughs> as long as they keep it where it is right now, Man, this kid can flat out play. Since the first day he came to Kentucky, the coaches told me, man, we got a really special player. He was only 17 then. So now he hits free agency. He could hit free agency at 22. You have to be able to lock him up. You can't teach what he has. It's not his jumper. It's his work ethic. All right, finally, the Sixers remain a suitor for the services of Kawhi Leonard, even though it was reported Kawhi only wants to play in Los Angeles. According to reports, Philly is the team that can put together the best trade package for Kawhi. CeCe, should the Sixers even try and trade for Kawhi, knowing what we know and where he really only wants to play? Uh, no, if you watched me on TV yesterday, if you heard me say anything about Kawhi, if you know, man, Kawhi Leonard is not playing basketball outside of 
What is it? 90210? Okay, well, that's a Beverly Hills area <laughs> yeah. code. Okay. Yeah, one of those, Los An the greater Los Angeles metropolitan area. No, he spent most of his life in the San Diego area. He likes it. He realizes at this point in his career, it's probably the only time that he can take control to get to Los Angeles. He wants Los Angeles. Wants to play basketball there. Does not want to play a half a season, two weeks, or two games anywhere else. There's nothing against Philadelphia, Boston, or any of these other places that all have inquired about Kawhi. Kawhi has been straightforward in telling these teams and also the players, anyone who tried to communicate from LeBron James's camp to Kawhi. Kawhi let them know. Anyone from Paul George's camp who, who tried to talk to him or any of the other big stars out there, because a lot of them reached out to Kawhi, Kawhi let them know that I'm trying to play in Los Angeles. It wouldn't do you any good to trade for me if you're not in Los Angeles. There's been a report that if Kawhi isn't traded, he could threaten to sit out the entire season. If, if he is traded to a non-Los Angeles team, does do you believe that situation still applies? That he would threaten you, or, I mean, trade for you? He can't control where he's traded to, but if he were traded to Philly or Miami or Boston, would that threat to not play still apply? That's San Antonio. If San Antonio and Greg Popovich are taking Kawhi in his, in his, in his group serious, mm -hmm. They wouldn't trade him anywhere else because the other teams also know, man, I can't trade him when a guy said that he's not going to play anywhere but Los Angeles. So you're not going to get the best package, and San Antonio knows. So there's, there's too much information. There's been too much communication as far as what he wants to do. And, I mean, Kawhi's got one of them strange injuries. The other things could linger on. You know, the player could be like, ah, uh, you know, eh, I don't know. He might, ah, uh, you know, it's something a had squad. a setback. Right. Like, which, which I, which is not something I love. I don't love. I, I, I haven't. There's some things about how Kawhi's done this I don't love. But as C would say, how I feel about it, I can tell the audience how I feel about it. But it doesn't really matter to the situation. It doesn't impact the reality of the situation. And what I mean, if if it, if he's so dead set on not playing in L.A. or I'm sorry, only playing in L.A for the Clippers or the Lakers, yes, if the Spurs don't trade him, he could sit out. But he could do something that you haven't mentioned. Like, if he is traded, a trade doesn't go through till a guy passes a physical. Oh. And, you, I mean, Ka Kawhi could just not show up. Like, oh, you, oh, you, and his physical is an important one. Sometimes a physical is just, it, it's, it's something you just have to do, but you, everyone's healthy involved. Kawhi could just not show up. Like, now, a lot of people are going to hear this and not like it, think it's not honoring the contract go ahead jenna i'm one of those people Nick. absolutely and i and i'm one of the people Play that... out the year you want to go to la go to la when you can but it shouldn't be against the spurs to not get everything you can for him now i i listen i tend to it's, agree with it's you. every side for himself if Kawhi's doing what's best for Kawhi, the spurs should do what's best for the spurs but What's but, best for the Spurs is not to trade him anywhere else but Los Angeles. Why? They can get more for him somewhere else. That's better no, they for the can. Spurs. No, that's just on paper, Jenna. The 76ers are not going to offer him a better offer than the Lakers. But, but that's but, because that's only because of w w his stance that he only wants to play for the Lakers. Yeah, Otherwise, you can't you can't go into it looking at absent of the information. Of course, and all so, these teams have the information. The 76ers are not going to give them more than Magic Johnson and the Lakers. But Lake. it's still up to the Spurs to decide where. It's up to them uh, to decide course, where they want to trade him for whatever reason. Even if they want, if it's to get him out of the West, they have the right to but choose where we're he goes. In, we're in a situation, and I think, oddly enough, your guy Danny Ainge is the best example of it, that the teams will be as cutthroat as possible. Isaiah Thomas. Oh, no one says anything about them. Plays through the injury. Yeah. <laughs> plays through his sister's tragic yeah, death. Yeah, then he got rid of him. I and got it. rid of him. And he'll. And now, what's he going to get in Orlando? Some some mid level deal. So I I I do understand from a player's perspective why the feeling would be if they can be that cutthroat, I can be this cutthroat. I do think at some point we have to decide if these contracts are actual contracts or if we can just rip them off. Thank up. you. That's I, what I no. I either get, honor I, it or don't honor I, it. But if I, you're not going to honor it, then let's I, not. I, I get well, the frustration. I'm going to tell you guys. Mm -hmm. I've been covering sports a long time, a lot longer than both of you. We're going to always be talking about ownership and what they do, and we and we don't even act like it's no big deal. Oh, see. They cut guys and tear up their contract. There ain't no honor, no contract with no owner. So a player, very seldom does he get the, this stronghold over an organization, and San Antonio would be foolish. R.C. Buford, you would be a fool. Pop, 
you would be a fool to trade Kawhi somewhere else besides Los Angeles. Listen, when you're talking about ownership ripping up contracts, this is, we're going to talk about Odell in a second. This is one of the reasons in football where ownership does rip up contracts all the time, I always support the player holding out. In basketball, where the contracts are guaranteed and they don't get ripped up, the guys get their money no matter what, it's a little bit different. But on this specific point, just real quick, on Philly, yes, Philly has the most assets. Philly has an unprotected pick from Miami in 2021. 2021 could be the double draft, the year the high school kids are available. Right. And, like, Philly has Sar Sarich, who is a perfect spur. Fultz, if the Spurs like him. So do they of have course, more than the Lakers uh, have to offer? Well, they have at least equal, and it look, maybe the Lakers are being stingy with what they want to offer. But the, the point, I think, that has to be understood is Philly knows what we know which is that it's not necessarily even a one-year rental for Kawhi. It's that you can try to execute this trade. Kawhi does have the power to make it to where the trade gets voided. And you can dislike that he would do that. I can think that's probably not the best way to go about it. But if he's going to do this, then it's Clippers, Lakers. And we can talk about which of those two teams have the better assets. But the idea that Philly can make the best offer, I think there is no reality that exists where they will make the best offer because they know what Chris knows. They know what we've been talking about. All right, let's leave it there. Giants wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. is working out and playing a little football in any other season. That's not news. But this offseason, OBJ waiting for a new contract, hoping to show the world his ankle is fully healed. It's news. Beckham missed all but four games last year with the injury. But check him out, working out. This was him working on his game in a uniform last year. Uh, but he did, in, in uh, working out, look like he was getting back to his old form. CC, how is. optimistic, and there it is. Watch Cutting, this catch. Moving. Looks like <sighs> he's not hampered by anything that held him back last year. How optimistic, Chris, are you for Odell to return to form? It, can, before Chris answers that question, can I make one observation? Because that went out on Twitter yesterday. Chris Carter, the only person in the world that saw that clip, and his response was, love the way you broke off the top of the route. Love like everyone else is focused on. It's not just a one-handed catch, but it was almost like he made the football appear. Like he just went and created it. You somehow, you loved the way he broke off the top of his route. It made me laugh when I saw it. Go well, ahead. Well, that's start. the only thing that's really important to me. The rest of it's not important. He's got some guy out there. I don't know if that's an NFL guy, but he, I don't know if he's going to make a roster <laughs> guy off of him in space like that in the slot. <laughs> and then watch this about him. I think he, he didn't catch that ball with one hand. He had to bring that ball to his left hand. That ball almost hit the ground. Watch his right hand there. Watch it. You see that ball when it came down? around his thigh oh he's getting ready to lose it All and right? that's probably not a catch even if he can make it he's going to be making it in NFL games but the yeah. routes he's a matter. special player he's a special special player you can't bump him you can't guard him one-on-one -on -one. he's very very smart he can play any of the three wide receiver positions he loves playing football he loves working out so I'm looking forward to seeing him play again last year the injury it robbed us of seeing one of the greatest wide receivers and continuing what he had done in his first three years, he's continuing one of the great legacies that we've seen in the wide receivers as young guys come in are very dominant. And that's where he is right now. I believe he will be back at the top of his game. And I believe that their offensive staff and their ability to get Barkley the football will only enhance what we've seen with Odell. All right, let me ask you a Do Odell question of the X's and O's type of stuff because the – you always talk about his route running and how precise it is, how good he is with his hands. Hands not catching the football, I'm talking about, I'm talking about hands off the line of scrimmage, things mm -hmm. like that. The more technical stuff that you see that we tend not to. Everyone else thinks of the catch against Brandon Carr in Sunday Night Football, the amazing catches we run in the highlights. But his biggest weakness as a wide receiver, it's not injuries, it's not route running, obviously. It's actually drops on easy passes. Yeah, it's well, focus. Fo okay, when, so typically when you have that type of skill, it would be like... A guy shooting contested jumpers at 43%, but wide open jump shots, he's only shooting at three point, he's only shooting 33%. Because in those, he doesn't focus. He's not locked in. And that's what Odell, he takes it for granted that he's going to catch it because his hands are so good. Sometimes, as a very good player, you don't play the game at the speed the other players are playing at. You play the speed a frame or two ahead of where they are. So a lot of times, instead of focusing on the football, you're already looking over your shoulder, ready to make the next 
move. And this is what you see with wide receivers. As they get older, as they get into their mid to late 20s, you see their focus get a little bit more intense. And that's just a part about learning to be a great wide receiver. And he's very, very close. But every once in a while, you'll see the easy drop. I, I want to follow up real quick. I, I remember, I apologize to date you and date myself a bit, but I, I have very few memories of you with the Eagles. But we, you and I have talked. I know the old, all Chris Carter does catch touchdowns. But you drops were never an issue for you in your NFL career, correct? From your rookie year, you never had a drops issue? No. Okay. So what... So, but and you're you were the caliber of player, obviously of Odell, and the spectacular catches. Why do you think for you or Jerry guys who also had the spectacular catch ability that that focus wasn't a problem? The guys that don't have catch drop issues, Fitzy, right? Larry Fitzgerald is a guy that's never really had a drops issues that I can remember. Why for those guys was that not a problem early in their careers? I think if you look at those other players, the reason why it's not an issue because those players are less emotional. You see them during the game stay at one level. That's one thing that I'm a lot like Michael Irvin, but I tried to be a lot more like Jerry Rice and stay level-headed and stay smooth and cool through the game. Sometimes that was hard for me to be able to do. And when you get distracted or you get involved in other things that can take your focus off of catching the football, it's very hard to catch the football in an NFL game. Not only is it hard to catch the ball, but, man, I'm not ashamed to tell you, man, you're afraid to get hurt. Like, I mean, every time that ball's in the air, you can get hurt. Now, either how many yards can I get? Who's closest to me? Can I get yards after the catch? All those things creep into your mind. So younger receivers, as we see in their first five years in the league, their focus tends to change once they go beyond that. And I believe Odell will do the same thing. All right, speaking of pass catcher that's not young anymore, Rob Gronkowski, can he bounce back after considering retirement? That's next on First Things First. Nobody happier for the NFL season to get underway more than Rob Gronkowski. The rumor mill spinning the last few months about his possible retirement, about his frustration with his head coach, about his contract extension. Coming off the Super Bowl loss, Gronk kept quiet about most of it until he let the team know he was coming back. That being said, he is more than ready for 2018. I'm super excited about the upcoming season, and uh, it's going to be fun. I mean, we got another year, another training camp, always a grind. Got to, got to get yourself through that, and then just excited for the season, man. Just, you know how it goes. You know, another year down, you know what to expect now. Going to year nine, you know how to do it. So I kind of feel like that's always good to have in the back of your mind. You know how it goes down. You know what to do. So super excited for this year. I just wanted to see where I was at and uh, see how I can get my body feeling, see if I can handle it, endure it again. And I feel like I'm super ready, man. Chris Kenny, we talk so much about the mental aspect of football. When, you, when you're contemplating retirement, how hard is it not just come back for next season, but to, to overcome that and get there, your mind frame right and then go back in and play and give 100% of yourself? Well, I guess the best way to describe it is by how my favorite head coach, Bill Parcells, used to describe it. And he says, if you're thinking about retirement, you are retired. And I know that's one of those things that people hear and it's cliche, but I actually lived it back in 2015 with the Baltimore Ravens. I was considering whether or not I wanted to come back and play football mm. for an 11th season. And you do everything to get your body in great shape, but ultimately there's a part of that mental edge that you have to have to go out there and play the game at the highest level. And when you're on that fence about whether or, whether or not you're going to play football, that's a bad place to be because when you're out there on the football field, you have to go 100 miles per hour. Otherwise, you run the risk of putting yourself in harm's way. So I look at what Rob Gronkowski has been saying all offseason, and it's easy to understand why he felt the way he did after the Super Bowl, just because you know that the New England Patriots are usually playing into January, if not in the Super Bowl in February. So it's a lot of football. It's a month more of football every single season. And Bill Belichick has some of the toughest practices in the NFL. So to get your mind wrapped around getting ready for training camp and the grind that is the NFL regular season, you know, you, this is one of those things you have to be fully committed to. So that's the one thing I worry about with Rob Gronkowski. Now, it sounds like they're going to work out that contract extension, and I guess that's that's probably what he's super excited about because I can guarantee you he's not super excited about going through a Bill Belichick training camp in a few weeks. No, go ahead, C. Well, I, I got a lot of respect for what you're saying. Um, it would be hard for people to understand that little thin edge between, oh, yeah, I want to play, I'm going to make a lot of money, I'm in the limelight, to the type of mentality that most of 
the 1,800 players that play in. And that means I'll go through him, I'll go through him or her and their mom regardless. And when you stop having that type of mentality, and that's a mentality that you have to respect, Tom Brady still feels that way. As is, is, is accelerated as he is in his career, he don't know how long he's going to play, he still feels that way. I used to tell guys, guys, like, Chris, what's the difference between you and the other players? I said, man, I'll hurt a guy. I'll do whatever I got to do. I'll deny myself. I won't, I won't um, eat certain foods. I will get the right amount of rest. I will be in the weight room. I will run my body into the type of conditioning that I'm one of the best in, 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 in the NFL as far as overall conditioning. When you start losing that, it's hard to play this game. Yep. You can play some other games. And you can do a lot of jobs, but it's hard to play that game. And when you say, when I wake up in the morning, I know what I'm going to put my body through, like, that's an edge an NFL player needs. And if you lose that, then you might as well be retired like Coach Parcell said. Listen, it, obviously, guys, when you say in this game compared to other games, obviously, NBA guys, this does not apply to them. Ray Allen, it felt like, was retired for two years, and people were still like, Ray, will you come play with us? Like, the violence isn't there, and it's just like, okay, can you come out and hit some jump shots for us? Can you come out and do one thing really well, be a specialist? There, are, Unless you're a kicker, like, the violence is going to be there, and you ain't no specialist. You're going to ask, be asked to do a whole lot of things on the football field. Here's why I don't worry about Rob Gronkowski. I don't think he was ever actually thinking about retiring. I think he wanted more money, and I think he maybe wanted to play for a different football team. I don't think Rob was ever actually going to go into movies this offseason. I don't think he was ever going to go into wrestling this offseason. I think Rob wanted a new contract. I think Rob wanted the, he wanted the Patriots to show him how valued he is. He might want to do those things down the road, and if, he, if I'm wrong, then everything you guys are saying applies. I just think this was more of a contract dispute, more of a Bill Belichick is a pain in my butt dispute than a I don't want to play football situation. This is what I got to respect. I, I used to feel this way walking to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I couldn't feel my feet for the first four or five steps. I'm, I'm only going to bathroom to, to urinate, but I have to sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't <laughs> see that. So when you talk about, oh, I didn't think he, man, we think about quitting now. Yeah. I mean, this game is hard. Well, what's I mean, and, not, and, and, this isn't and this game has delivered some blows to Rob Gronkowski that I know he's got aches and pains right now going into his ninth year. I mean, I played 16 years, so there's times, year three to five, man, you have some times you question it. Year seven to nine, you begin. And any time you get beyond 10 years, every year you question it. And the, and, and the marks that it leaves on you, it's not about my attitude. Man, when I can barely walk, when I'm trying to get a bone spur removed from my ankle that's in between that stops my ankle from flexing, there, man, there, there is no offense. There is no amount of money that removes that. So I believe the Gronk, what he was talking about, that retirement, it's real. He's within two years of definitely being out of pro football. Let's just talk at the Patriots for a second. So now they don't have Edelman to start. How much more now do the Patriots – I mean, we know what Gronk needs from the Patriots. How much do the Patriots need Gronkowski in that Well, lineup? he's huge for what they do because the Patriots are an in-between-the-numbers passing team. That's where they want to live. Now, they'll stretch the field and attack the guys outside the numbers, but for the most part, they want to move the ball with the slot receiver and Rob Gronkowski because that's where you create the mismatches on the defensive side of the ball. So when you start talking about the weapon that Rob Gronkowski is for Tom Brady – knowing that you're not going to have Edelman at the beginning of the season, I think it's important to make sure that this guy is all in. But to CC's point, this isn't the first time we've heard Rob Gronkowski talk about retirement. So when you start to verbalize those concerns in consecutive off-seasons, a part of me believes that it's a real thing. Now, I know a lot of it's contract-related. He's got $17 million coming to him over the course of the next two years. He feels like he's grossly underpaid for what he does. And I would agree with that. But I don't know if this is the way to go about it. When you start opening the door to saying you're potentially considering retiring, I think that's a dangerous spot for a player to be in because this is a game that you can't play half-hearted. You have to be a savage when you step on that football field. Otherwise, you're going to put yourself in a bad way. All right, so then I have a question for both you guys because it sounds like from what, Chris, you were describing about walking to the bathroom and you just kind of doing the silent no, church. He's, he's, no, he's right. right. Doing the he's amen. absolutely right. So absolutely explain right. the distinction between what you're saying Bill Parcells is talking about. Mm -hmm. When you're thinking about retirement, you're retired. And what you're describing that every veteran goes through, which is, man, this hurts so much. Like, yeah, but you begin to ask yourself, how long can I train 
like this. Because I'm just going to tell you, we're in a window now, 4th of July, until the time we get to training camp. You're going to hear stories from guys, I'm, in, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I'm faster, this is the best I ever felt, I'm <laughs> uh, I didn't grow in two inches, I'm Benjamin Buttons, I'm going backwards in age. Like, this is what we see, okay. so be careful. This is the most important year of Rob Gorkowski's career. Reason why they miss Edelman? Yes, but also, this is the first time that New England looked at trading him. So if he gets hurt in this year, it could be his last year. And anytime you put that emphasis on one year, to me, it's always, man, a guy ends up getting hurt, and that's what I'm watching with him. With him. Yeah, you're right, CC. And to echo your sentiments, I had a defensive line coach in Baltimore, the late Clarence Brooks. He used to always say, guys, I got good news and bad news. On the first day of training camp, this is as good as you're going to feel for the rest of the regular season. Bad news, uh, the good news is you don't have anything to worry about. Bad news is this is the best you're ever going to feel. So uh, understand that you're going through that type of grind when you start talking about playing the game of football. And with, with Rob Gronkowski's mentality and the way that he's playing the game and what they're going to ask him to be doing, it's going to be a lot of contact. He's got to make sure he's 100% committed. And let's not forget, they lost their old pro, all pro left tackle, Nate Solder, and Gronk is the best end-of-the-line blocker, I believe, in the NFL. All right, Chris, we'll see you a little bit later on the show. All Sounds right. good, Sam. Coming up, hey, why did the Lakers pass on Boogie Cousins? That's next on this Independence Day edition of First Things First. Back here on First Things First, NBA champion Antoine Walker good joins to see us you again, now. Sir, Happy sir. 4th, Antoine. Thanks for being with us yeah. today. Check you out some fireworks tonight, downtown Manhattan. That ain't my thing. See, I'm going to stay away from that. Okay, oh. no problem. Oh, oh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I, understand. I understand. I understand. Okay. I understand. I'll come down, CC. I understand. We should ask that off the Shy air. Shy town. I got you. I got you. Shy. I got you. Uh, Antoine, we are still learning more about the one-year deal that sent DeMarcus Cousins to the Warriors. You know when that incredible mm. team got even more incredible? Turns out the Lakers could have had him for a similar price, similar deal, but they politely declined. Thanks, no thanks. Opting to sign free agent veterans like Lance Stevenson and Rajon Rondo instead. What do you think, Antoine? Did the Lakers make a mistake passing on Boogie Cousins? They made a huge mistake. Um, and mm -hmm. the, reason, the reason why I say that, if you look at the DNA and the history of LeBron James, he's played well. His two championships, obviously leaving Kevin Love, who's a stretch four, mm -hmm. center type of guy. But also Chris Bosh. He needs one of those type of guys on his team. And that's... That's what DeMarcus Cousins brings to you on the offensive end. His ability to stretch the floor, be a presence inside. And then you got to look at his career numbers. This is a guy that averaged 25, I mean, 21 points a game as a career. But last year, 20, 48 games, 25 points and 13 rebounds. LeBron James needs another star alongside of him. And if you're going to go against Golden State, he would have been a perfect fit for him because he brings toughness. And you got a one-year deal. You got to think about it. You got a one-year deal. If it doesn't work, you don't lose anything. Five, if it's going to be 5.3 million, you don't lose much from it. And if you're getting with LeBron, LeBron's a great teammate. LeBron can have that type of influence on him that can change him. And if you got the idea you're going to bring in Rajon Rondo, who can be the icing on the cake, Rajon just played with him. Rajon went to the University of Kentucky. Rajon's a guy that can get in his head, that can talk to him, that can get him on the right right lift or how, how to play. And if it doesn't work, you only you ridden the four year. You got you to try to figure out some pieces to put with LeBron James if you want to win the state. I agree you have to figure out some pieces to put with LeBron James. My concern, if I'm the Lakers, and Boogie, Boogie Cousins, pardon me, is does adding Boogie, if they could have added Boogie, make it harder to get Kawhi Leonard and get Kawhi Leonard long term? If what we're hearing from C started this, and now we've heard other people, Sham Sharania talked about it on The Herd yesterday, that... Kawhi is not necessarily so into the super team thing. It's not that he wouldn't want to play with LeBron, but that he doesn't think that the guy that he compared himself most to or people around him compared himself most to is Russell Westbrook. I can be a draw of people. But we also know Kawhi doesn't like a lot of what you would call circus, a lot of noise around the team. There's going to be noise surrounding the team with LeBron no matter what. Right. And I have real concern about whether or not Boogie's going would be happy in any situation on a one-year under-market-value contract that isn't Golden State, where he is essentially sacrificing money to go walk into a ring. For all those reasons, I don't think it's quite as simple. And that's not even to mention that you're not going to have him until Christmas. I don't think it's quite as simple as you're making it out to be. Well, you got to eventually add pieces with LeBron James. Yes. you got an opportunity to add a 27, 28-year-old guy who's arguably the top 15 player in this league. you got a chance to try him out. You get a free tryout, basically, for $5 million. I'm not worried about Kawhi Leonard at this point. Kawhi Leonard is probably next year. 
but I get to put them with my young core, see if it can fit, see if it can mix. If it don't, it doesn't hurt me going into 2019. I still got to put pieces around them. The 2019 class ain't that great. No, but what if, what if, what if the Lakers and their theory was, okay, we'll let him try out with Golden State because we're not competing with Golden State this year. We got LeBron for four years. What about we put him with Cousins in year 19, 20, and 21? Like, you compared to... Season and you because, see if he's because you're only going to have him for one season, and that season being abbreviated. Now, I like the fact of having Rondo on the roster because if Cousins is healthy, Rondo's already on the roster. All I got to do is give him another one-year deal, and I can go out and get Cousins next year after we have seen him come back from that injury. You have to be concerned about that Achilles injury. The only reason why he's on a one-year deal is because of that Achilles injury, and I believe that the Lakers, if you want Boogie, and I do believe that the stretch fours and fives, they have helped LeBron, but this is not the most important year as far as competing against Golden State. I believe next year and the year after that will they really but have an opportunity. That's why you, that's why you take the chance because this is not that important year. It, you got to see if he can fit in with your young guys right now. If you're not making a trade for Kawhi Leonard, he's a good fit in what you got going on right now, especially if you can add Rondo to the equation. If you can add Ron, a guy that's just played with him, he was under control. You know, he was under control. This year. He, he was, was wasn't but as he bad. was also, he believed, playing for a max contract. And so you can argue, well, he's now he's going to be in the same situation. I would have... This well, is this is the one thing, too. Before about, let's, let's just... Let me put something on this year. People that are around him, not only on the court, it wasn't just a max contract year. He's figured out some things off the court. Like, he's doing better socially also. Now, we saw it as basketball fans on the court 25 and 12. But as a human being, all right, because there are people that have concerns about him. You know, and it, these are real concerns. It's not as if he's a bad person. It's not as if he it breaks the law. But he's got some, I would say, mental, mental health issues. issues yes, yeah. that are very real. And listen, I, as odd as this sounds, I'd feel better about Boogie on a two-year deal for more money because I think he's going to feel more secure and happier. Boogie on a team that he's going to go to and instantly be the second best player, which is what he would be on the Laker team, where he's only there, he's only there starting beginning of January, call it, where he's playing for a max contract, where he doesn't have the carrot at the end of the year that they have in Golden State, which is a near guaranteed championship. All of that concerns me. Also, the fact that on a one-year deal, you can't, you don't have his bird rights. You can't then go over the cap to bring him back. That concerns me. LeBron and the young players all learning to play together one way, and then Boogie comes back learning to play together another way. I also, I, I'm not discounting this report. I'm sure there is mostly truth to it. But the timeline of this now... We are now talking about a lot of things that must have happened in a very short window of <laughs> yes. time. I mean, free agency opened midnight, su Saturday night, Sunday morning, depending on how you look at it. Boogie says by 5 a.m. Monday, he's on the phone with the Warriors. We know that he talked with the Pelicans. We know that he was in talks with Dallas and with Washington, even if they didn't make, uh, even they didn't make an official offer. Right. And now, supposedly, they got to, this is what I don't understand. Boogie claims he had no offers, but now also, but he turned the Lakers, he wanted to go there, and they, the, the timeline of this is all very quick in a 36-hour period. I think out of respect, I think New Orleans offered him a deal. Oh. I, I believe they offered him a deal at 12.01. I went through free agency. You get phone calls from 12.01 to 12.30. 16, they may have interest, they may have money for you. When I'm my free agency year, nobody had money. They told me, you can sign for the mid-level. I'm average of 20 and 10. I don't want the mid-level. But I know they offered him some money. Now it's his decision whether or not to take. I think he felt insulted. Mm -hmm. I think he thought New Orleans was going to pay him the max. And I think he was trying to do whatever he can to burn New Orleans. And he looked out for self a little bit mm. by trying to play for a championship. Well, that's the, that's the other part of this. And we saw that New Orleans offered him before free agency two years, $40 million. And that exact offer might not have been on the table for him at free agency. Maybe because New Orleans knew they could bring in Julius Randle. But... There, there's a very interesting article today on Yahoo about how this was a message to all the Boogie haters, essentially, that this was Boogie's chess move going to Golden State. Oh, okay, and whether you consider this chess or checkers and whether you think Boogie's haters are legitimate or not, 
it, there is some validity to me that Boogie understood the, the shock waves it would send through the league. I'm going to Golden State. I'm going for them for just a little more than Kayvon Looney money. See how everyone feels about it. Yeah, but he's not going to put up big numbers at Golden State. We all know that. It, can he get healthy? Can he play well within their system? You know, that's, that still remains to be seen. But it's a good move because he can win a championship. He's nine years in. He never played in the playoff game. So I'm not mad at him for wanting to win a championship. Mm -hmm. But his, that's not going to, like, his career is going to change. His numbers are going to come down. He's going to be in a different role. Their best five, and I said it yesterday, is their small lineup. That's their bread and butter. He, and can he take not being on the floor late in games when the game matters the most? That's going to be interesting to see. Everybody's all scared of DeMarcus Cousins on paper, but it ain't all glitz and glamour because he, he can't defend the way Golden State defends, and he's going to have a problem not being in the game late. Nick is hoping he go there and him and Draymond just <laughs> fight like <laughs> cats and dogs. They could. <laughs> hey, it could possibly. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not wishing anything bad on anybody. No, you I did don't tell me that in my office. No. Oh. Oh.